Hey everybody, welcome to the pit garages at Mid-Ohio Raceway. Behind me we have the brand new 6th generation BMW M4 and its predecessor, the 5th generation car. We're going to be breaking down the differences between these two cars for you guys, including but not limited to this gigantic schnoz. So we're here with BMW's product and technology spokesperson, Jay Hansen. He's joining us to help us break down the differences between the new models uh, with the 6th gen car. Uh, one of the most in your face uh, and, and present changes is the exterior styling. Uh, Jay, can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the grill, about the broader uh, exterior changes? Of course, of course. Yeah, now of course the first thing that's going to meet your eye when you're looking at any brand new car is going to be the styling. Sure. And immediately you're going to have a visceral reaction to it or you're going to not think much of it at all. Yeah. We'd prefer that you have the visceral reaction to it. <laughs> yeah. Obviously we have the prominent twin kidney grills up front. Uh, it sends a very clear message, this is an aggressive car. The engine underneath the bonnet needs a lot of air to perform to a manner that's going to be that's going to be fit the M3 and the M4 and its racetrack personality. But also you get plenty of extra air coming in through the ducts on either side. Yeah, and so, um, you know, can you, can you talk a little bit about um, where all this air is feeding into? Um, you know, we, we have maintained the, the straight six with the twin turbos. What are some of the main changes between the, the outgoing car and the new one? Well, obviously now we had the uh, base model car over here in the F82 generation, and that had optional A competition package, which was yeah. a bundle of options to help the car perform a little bit better in a track kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, it also increased the horsepower by a bit. Uh, in this new generation, you actually have two separate and distinct models. Yeah. So you have what we call the base or the core model car, which is 473 horsepower through rear wheel drive and a six speed manual gearbox. The competition model is an entirely different model altogether. 503 horsepower from the same S58 engine, mm -hmm. an eight speed automatic gearbox directing power to the rear wheels. There are a whole host of interior changes in this 6th gen model. I would say the overall feel leans even more luxurious than the last one, which got a little bit bunker-like. It was kind of dark in the old car. Here there's a lot of contrast. We have this uh, gray leather lining down here, and then this big swath of black leather that's covering the dashboard. There's all these little carbon bits, and it just lends the new M4 a bit more of an upscale feel. I would say this is an altogether more pleasant place to be than a Porsche 911, despite discrepancies in cost. Uh, controversially, BMW has swapped out the analog gauges that have been present in every other generation of M3 and M4 for this digital cluster. It has all the information that you need, but personally, and at Road and Track, we always prefer to have the analog gauges. I would say that this is a, a great upgrade over the last car, but probably the coolest part of it all are these seats. You have these uh, carbon buckets that are adjustable with the, without a fixed back. Um, you have a panel in here that is removable so that you can sit in it with a racing helmet and then put it back on for road duties. I had some time in these seats this morning, a good road trip, and I've got to say I find them very comfortable, uh, very adjustable, and that's not something you get often with a carbon bucket. They're fabulous seats, they're beautiful to look at, and they even have these cool little lit up M4 logos in the back. So another big change for this generation is xDrive and the integration of four-wheel drive in, in the M4 and M3 family. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about moving forward, uh, what xDrive is going to be available in, in these as far as uh, with a manual transmission and with the competition package? Yeah, it'll be available exclusively on the competition model car. Mm -hmm. So it'll be eight-speed automatic gearbox only, mm -hmm. uh, but it will be available on M3, M4, as well as M4 competition. Mm -hmm. And, and so what else? We, we have the, the engine, we have the exterior, we have uh, the all-wheel drive. Um, what, are, what are the big sea changes from BMW's perspective? It's just a matter of making sure that, you know, we want to put a lot of power into these engines because power yeah. is fun. Yeah. Power is what's going to give you that visceral reaction when you're driving the car on the track. And power is nothing without control. Yeah. So as the power increases, obviously your need to be able to control that power is going to increase as well. Sure. And we feel that xDrive is an excellent way to really get as much of that power out of the engine onto the pavement where it's going to turn into a lot of tire smoke and a lot of fun on an afternoon. Yeah, sure. Um, but that's not to say that it's that's all that that car is. It's not yeah. going to overwhelm you with grip yeah. because that uh, MX drive is going to be switchable. So there are varying levels at which the vehicle will 
send power to the front of the car. Yeah. It's always going to be a rear bias system. You can get some power to the front if it needs to. And then, of course, just as we demonstrated with uh, the uh, M5 mm -hmm. MX drive system, the front axle can be disconnected entirely, and you can just turn it back into a rear drive drift machine. Well, and, and speaking of a, a drift machine, there is a drift mode, correct? What's, there is. what's that called? Can you explain that a little bit? There is an option called M Drive Professional. Yeah. And it's available on either car, M3 or M4, either competition or base model. Yeah. And it includes the M Drift Analyzer, as well as a 10-mode switchable traction control system. Mm -hmm. So by varying which of those positions the, the car is in, uh, will dictate how much wheel slip uh, you are allowing the car to give you sure. and the angle of drift that you are then able to create. Yeah. Uh, and then it will actually take, the, the computer will take different you know, different parameters of your drift, such as, you know, slip angle and wheel speed sensor yeah. and that sort of thing, and actually rate the quality of your drift on yeah. a one to five star scale. Um, and I noticed on the car, there's a really uh, fetching set of wheels. I was wondering mm -hmm. if you could kind of explain some of the changes with the wheels. Apparently, uh, this is the first time that there's going to be a staggered setup on the M4. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So obviously the steering and the suspension and the brakes are a constant evolution mm -hmm. uh, from one generation to the next. We want to make advantage of all the power that we're putting into these engines, mm -hmm. get them down onto the ground and, and make the car really handle very well. And one of the ways that we did that with the sixth generation car is the front wheels and tires are staggered from the back. So base wheel and tire package is 18 inches in the front, 19 inches in the back. On top of that, there are several different options for putting 19 inch wheels in the front and 20 inch wheels in the back, also on base model and competition. So a uh, big thanks to Jay and BMW for bringing this car out for us. We really appreciate it. Um, if you readers have any more questions, please let us know. Uh, we're going to have plenty more content available in the magazine and online at rodentrack.com.